So yeah, they may tell you you are diabetic, but I'm a child of God. And, and, and if it's his will, he will heal me from it. And what I like about it is when I went to the doctor a couple, two weeks ago, the doctor asked me, am I right, lady? He asked me, how you getting your numbers down so quick? Because I know who I am and whose. So, so I wouldn't dare tell you not to take your medicine. Take your medicine. Sister Matthews, I heard it. Watch what you eat, but still know that he is a healer. Somebody say amen. amen. So we got, brothers and sisters, we got to let our light shine. We got to start acting like we believe in what we confess. I'm a deacon, but you ask me how I'm doing. Oh, I ain't doing no good. The devil is a lie. I'm in pain, but guess what? He still is a healer. Uh, somebody uh, on Facebook text, hey man, if, if you know that he's a healer, I may be on a walker, but guess what? He's still a healer. So verse number 16 of our text, lest I bore you, and I'm almost done. Watch, get ready, Deviant, I'm almost done. Woo-wee! Let your light so shine. Sometimes your light may get dim. Mm. But guess what? Do, do what I did this morning. This morning, uh, uh, those lights was dim, and I just put a new battery in it. Just put a word in your, in your system and watch you charge up. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. God, your word is a lamp to my feet. Hallelujah. And a light to my path. Brothers and sisters, I want to talk as the spirit guides just for another 10 minutes. If y'all say amen, it's uh, 1146. If y'all say amen enough, we'll be out of here. We'll be done by 12, and we'll be going into our communion. I want to talk um, as the spirit guides with this thought in mind. Um, we are continuing uh, this series. It's time to start completing the good works God has for your life, part five. We continue in this series. But uh, my subtitle today is, Is Your Good Works Acceptable to God? If I could just paraphrase it, can I, I cannot just say it like this. Is what you're doing pleasing God? How many know, and, 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 and we'll pull it up in the Bible, how many know God will turn a deaf ear to you? He would turn a deaf ear to you, not when you are outside of his, uh, in his will, but when you're outside of his will. Okay, let, let's pray, and I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Uh, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. I thank you for your word being made fresh. We thank you, God, for all you've invested in us. I believe you for a blessing on today, God. Now, Lord, speak, for your servants are hungry. Speak, for your servants heareth. God, again, what would you have me to say to this people at this time of their lives? God, with all the things that's going on in our world, and uh, we don't know what season it is from, from the weather and and, and we're just, so much is going on. But God, give them a word through me. Give them a word that you gave to me to give to them. For it is in Jesus' name that I pray this prayer. Amen. Uh, brothers and sisters, in this fifth week, and, and I, <laughs> uh, minister, uh, as I type, 
Uh, Minister Cade, say amen so I know that you're still there. Uh, <laughs> Uh, in this fifth week, we should have discovered that it's taking you awfully long, minister. <laughs> Amen. Thank, thank, thank God for technology. Amen. <laughs> we should have discovered by now, by this fifth week, that good works are things that you do that brings glory to God. Amen, minister. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Good works brings happiness to humanity. <laughs> and good works improves lives. Can I say that again? Because y'all y'all was very slow about saying amen. Amen. I'm, I'm going I'm to stop, uh, minister. Amen. Uh, good works are things that you do that brings glory to God. Say amen, uh, uh, Sister Vaughn, if you are still on, say amen. Good works are things that you do that brings glory to God. Good works bring happiness to humanity. And good works improves lives. Watch this. The Bible says, that's why the Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works. Brothers and sisters, what you do, your good works, should be seen by people, by men, as men and women, as Christians so that they may glorify God. Let your, let your good works be evident, and when they see it, they will glorify our God. When our good works improves people's lives, this, that glorifies God. Well, okay, let me bring it a little closer. When someone joined church, the angels rejoiced. And it pleases God. So when, when our good works improves people's lives, it glorifies God. At the end of the day, your good works should glorify God. Watch this. We, we get ready to have another shift in this message. Uh, 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 your good works should glorify God. This is the purpose. I got about, I got about 10 more minutes. This is the purpose for which we were created to do good works. This, that's why we was created, uh, Sister Angel. We weren't created to look good and, and to think we all of that and some. You done already took the glory off of God and put it on yourself. We were created. To do good works. We were created for us to complete assignments. That's why I say we need to hurry up and finish this assignment because God got others. What did I say last week? He got others sitting in the cart. But he can't give it to you until you finish the one you're working on. Uh, 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 it is for us to glorify God, uh, for us to accomplish uh, the vision that has been planted in us. God has, it's in our DNA. God has planted good works in you. The Bible says we are his workmanship. Brothers and sisters, let me put it a little closer. Uh, let, me put, let me bring it a little closer. Let me bring it closer to home. Nobody, not even y'all, not even me. Nobody creates something without having a purpose for it. Yeah, Pastor, that was good. God did not create us just to be creating us. I didn't watch this. I, I've shared this 
uh, 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 this, this, this uh, story with you all uh, before. Uh, uh, when I moved uh, 13 years ago uh, to 839, uh, uh, so I didn't watch this, uh, Minister Watson. I didn't plant the peach tree, but I did uh, water it and, and, and put powder on it and, and did, I, I did everything to the peach tree. It was already there. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't create the peaches, uh, 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 but, but I took care of the peach tree. Uh, uh, so when I couldn't get any benefits from the peach tree, I got rid of the peach tree. Because what's the purpose of having a peach tree and investing in, in investing in it? I bought an aisle to put in there so the squirrels wouldn't. I sprayed it so the squirrels wouldn't eat all of my peaches. And summer after summer after summer, I got no peaches. The squirrels got them. They were pretty and green, and 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 guess what? The squirrels got them. So since I couldn't benefit from something that I was creating, I got rid of the peach tree. Brothers and sisters, God is, listen, God, God has planted and invested in you. And if he can't benefit from it, That's why, that's why, see, that's why we, we, that's why we have to be careful on when we get things and we, we say God gave this to you. You don't know that. So brothers and sisters, so I cut down all the way to the stump, the peach tree, because I could not benefit from it. Good works, brothers and sisters, should naturally flow through us. And whenever something blocks the flow of good works, our good works, it's trying to choke the life and the nature of God in you. When, 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 when people uh, that you uh, loved and you invested in, When that peach tree died, and, and, what good is the peaches if I can't get none of them? I love this quote, uh, 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 Sister Angela, Sister Jackie, by Mark Twain. Mark Twain said it this way, the two most important days in your life is the day that you were born and the day you found out why. Some of us, whew, some of us been in church 90 years and still don't know why we were born. It's important to know uh, why the purpose the assignments that God has for you. If, 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 you're, if you don't know your purpose and your, your assignments and that God has for you, then you're just like the peach tree. You producing peaches, but God can't enjoy it. Mm. So Mark Twain put a pen to a paper and said, that the two most important days in your life is the day you were born and the day you found out why. In other words, the day you were born was a great day. But when you discover why God put you together, why did God put you on earth? What, 
what, what is your purpose on earth? It ain't to, to just have babies and, 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 yeah, he did say produce, multiply. He, but that wasn't your only purpose. Remember, he, have, he has assignments for us. What are my good works that God has retained? Notice I said retained. He keeps possession of it so that he could be glorified. Did you understand that? What are my good works that God has retained in me? That God still holds possession. There are some good works that God has allowed, that God has planted, that he wants not only the glory, but he wants some of the profit. Y'all finna get quiet. Y'all finna get quiet. Y'all finna get quiet. Not only does he, let's get it, help me join. Not only did he plant it in you, so he planted the good works in you, not only to be glorified, but he also wants some of the profit. Uncle Sam wants some of your profit. Ooh, and Uncle Sam said, because I don't trust y'all, I'm going to take it before you even get it. But see, God ain't so hard like that. God said, I'm going to let you get it. So once again, if the peach tree, if I can't benefit from the peach tree, then what good is the peach tree? That's why I think God allowed things to happen because he's still trying to get the good works out of you. And sometimes you have to knock some of us down. Put us, I think the old said it, put us flat on our back so we can't do nothing but look up so that he could get the good works out of you. <laughs> so not only does he give you good works, uh, uh, that he may be glor glorified, but he wants some of the revenue. Okay, let me give you scripture since y'all looking at me like I'm, I'm, I'm speaking Chinese. He said, will a man rob me? And what I like about it, and I say this all the time, he, he didn't even give you a chance to answer. He said, yes. And then he didn't even give you a chance to start explaining and giving reasons. He said, I know why you will rob me, and I know how you will rob me through. So watch this. So when you don't honor his word, then he will what? He'll cut you down. I didn't say. I didn't say he'll get rid of you. I say, but he'll cut you down. Your works given by God is so crucial to God's plan. You and I have a purpose in God's story. That's beautiful. Just like Moses and them, they had a part in God's story. I heard, I heard uh, uh, somebody say this morning, uh, yeah, God uh, allowed man to write the Bible, but he gave him them what to write. So, 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 so you have a purpose in in God's story, somewhere uh, somebody will refer to you before they refer to Moses now. You will be the Moses in somebody's book. You will be, oh, you will be uh, uh, the Joe in somebody. I lost everything. I was down to my last dime. I was homeless. I was this. I was that. So somebody would look at your life, your story, before they look at Job's. Because you and I have a purpose in God's story. 
Brothers and sisters, if you can feel your pulse, and I ain't talking about with your thumb, if you can feel your pulse, God's got a plan for you. If you got a pulse, God has a plan for a plan for you. That's why. Watch this. Ooh, can I just be one hundred? Somebody, somebody text it and say, in the comments say, just say, be one hundred. Can I just be one hundred? That's why you haven't died yet. You haven't died yet because you haven't fulfilled your purpose. All of your purpose, your assignments. You ain't you ain't still alive because you exercising and, and eating right and 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 look that that there, there are people that have accidents and 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 you could have been in an accident, but he didn't allow that to happen. You could have died in your sleep. But God got to get the benefits of what he put in you first. Oh, my God. Okay, okay. Let me, let me give you some Bible since y'all looking at me like I'm speaking Chinese. Moses was raised rich. Uh, help me, minister. Uh, he, he left his richness, did an injustice, and hid for 40 years. But he didn't die. He wasn't killed. He was raised rich. He left the richness. He killed a man. And then he hid out. But he didn't die because he had some work that he had to do. Because of the workmanship. That has been planted in him. Moses wasn't killed because Moses had not fulfilled his good works. He had not fulfilled his purpose. In other words, Moses had not yet done what he would be remembered for. <laughs> Some of us let's just be honest, have convinced ourselves uh, sometime that it's over. Uh, I can't get ahead. I ain't going to never be healed. Uh, the way I am is the way it is. Uh, I'm washed up. I'm insignificant. This is, this is how the story going to end. But brothers and sisters, I came to church to tell you, if you got a pulse, God got a plan. If you got a pulse, can, can y'all text that? Can y'all text that? Uh, y you know, we, we on our phones doing the message anyway. Can you text that? If I got a pulse and God got a plan. Thank you, Minister, Minister Cage. I come to tell you that if you got a pulse, although it may look bad right now, although uh, 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 a minister was praying, although the, uh, uh, the, the mortgage is on, a, on the church and it has to be paid uh, by a certain time, uh, uh, your mortgage in your home is, is past due and your car note past due, your job is acting crazy. This is not how the story is going to end. If you got a pulse, ah, oh, thank you, Lady Freeman. Thank you, Lady Freeman. Amen. All the way from Ohio. Amen. Amen. She's tuned in. God bless you. Tell Bishop I, with the house of David, say good morning. If you got a pulse, God got a plan. And it may very well be that you have not done what God, what people 
will remember you for. Brothers and sisters, the lesson is is shifting. Brothers and sisters, you first have to know who you are and whose you are in order to serve your good works. You can't can't just uh, be out there kicking it and doing all this and all that and, and and think that you're serving God's works. You don't even know who you are. You have to first know who you are and whose you are. Our purpose is, listen, listen, here it is, right here it is, right here. And then this probably will be the end of this series. Here it is, right here. Our purpose is to bring the purpose and the rule of God to everything we touch. That's it right there. That's your purpose. Brothers and sisters, and I'm jumping ahead of myself, your purpose and your assignments is two different things. I don't care how you word it, your purpose is to bring the purpose and the rule of God, the purpose and the rule of God to everything you touch. Somebody asked, Somebody may ask, uh, because they can't ask questions in the sermon, somebody asking, what is the main rule of God? I'm glad you asked. It's in the book of Matthews. Somebody asked the teacher, teacher, which commandments in the law is the greatest? And Jesus said, he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. And with all your soul and with all your mind. The things, the tools that he gave to you, your heart, your soul, your mind. This is the greatest rule of God. That's it right there. That's your purpose. Is to purpose God to to purpose the rules of God. Our churches need to bring the love of God to every situation. Politics, school, home, work. If you ain't sharing God at home, I know you ain't sharing them at school. If you ain't sharing God at home, I know you you just going through a ritual at, school, at what church? Somebody, somebody said it best. Somebody said it starts at home. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, since y'all are looking at me like I'm speaking Chinese, uh, Ephesians four, one and three, one through three says, "I urge you." Here it is. Paul said it was telling this to. Uh, uh, one of the churches, he said, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling. Okay, let me, refer, let me change a couple of words in there. I urge you to live a life worthy of the purpose that you receive. Ephesians chapter number four, one through three. He tells you, he said, received you, that you received, that he planted in you. He says, I urge you to live a life of worthy of of your calling that you receive. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one Another in love. That's the rule of the land. That, that, that's, that's, and remember we already said that, that if, you, if you are doing your good works and you ain't doing it with love, you might as well just cut it down.
Mm. Paul said, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you receive. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Your purpose and your assignments are not the same thing. Watch this. Ooh. If y'all miss this, if y'all, it's all about love. Amen. Uh, 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 that's why I don't understand why Tina Turner said, well, love got to do it, but that's a whole different sermon. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's a whole different message. Uh, uh, but, but, but your purpose, here it is right here. And for those of you that, that are taking notes and I'm going on so I can be out of here, uh, as I told y'all in 15 or 20 minutes, uh, 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 listen, listen to the message again, and then you can t- finish your notes. Your purpose is to bring the love of God into every assignment. That's your purpose. That's why I say your purpose and your assignment is two different entities. Your assignment, here it is. Your assignment is where you are currently fulfilling your purpose. Because it's all about God. Whatever you touch, whatever you do, uh, wherever you go, it is, it is to glorify God. Even the assignment that he gave you. We got to understand that. The assignment that he gave you. is to glorify him in working it. And if you're not glorifying him in your works, cut it down. You got to know who you are in God. You got to know your identity. You got to know your purpose to bring the love of God into every situation of life. You're trying to do something and God ain't in it. Have you, have, have you been there before? God, I, I need to put you on pause for a minute. I got to go and do this. Then that's a true sign you don't even need to be doing if you got to take God out of it. Because if he ain't going to get the glorification out of it, what's the point of doing it? you just like a peach tree, and I can't get no peaches. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, know your assignment. Know your good works. Your assignment, your works has been planted in you. Watch this. Your assignment and your works have been planted in you. Your purpose you plant it back in God. Because everything that you go to do goes back to him. It's to be glory, him, him to be glorified. God is to be glorified. God is to get the glory in everything you do. That's why verse 16 of our text says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify me. It's all about God. That's why you were born. The important day of your life is when you were born and when you found out why. Mm. Brothers and sisters, if you can uh, fulfill your assignment, and I think I said it, uh, last Sunday in the Sunday, if you can do it by yourself, then it was an assignment. Ooh, ooh, it was just a gig. Watch this. Here it is, Advent season. Brothers and sisters, take what I have said and meditate on it because you were born to glorify God. You were born and given assignments to 
glorify God. Here it is. Jesus was born to this world to serve, to do the good works that God planted in him. Jesus said in John 9, uh, I think it's around verse 4 and 5, he said, I must work the work of him that sent me. That's it right there, y'all. Even Jesus said it. Write it down. Look it up. John chapter 9, verse 4 or 5. He said, I must work the work. I, what the, here it is. I must work the work, the assignment of him who sent me. Brothers and sisters, if Jesus had to do it, why you think uh, you just here to, to look good? <laughs> you got this thing all wrong. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So somebody would say, and then I'm done. Somebody would say, uh, Brother Devion, somebody would say, so, so did God, Minister, they go, they go, they go, don't y'all text me. So, does God use us to do his works? <laughs> Ephesians chapter number two says it better than uh, anything. We read it already. It says, we are his workmanship. <laughs> Created. In Jesus for good works. It ain't about you. Which God prepared beforehand. Before you even had anything to do with it. So that we would walk in them. We are workmans, uh, workmanship created in Christ Jesus. This means that God is at work in our lives. He knows our weakness. He knows our limitation. That's why it's a good thing that he put it in us. Because if he put it in us, he knows we can do it. And you ain't going to die. You ain't going nowhere until you fulfill your purpose. He is still at work in us and working through us. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. I'm done. And I'm going to read from the contemporary English version. Mm, good God Almighty. I'm going to read it from the CEV. Contemporary English version. And it says this. God is working in you to make you ready and able to obey him. Brothers and sisters, you have only two sources from which to, which to develop your values or develop your works. You only have two sources from which to develop your values or develop your works. You can either do it the world's way or you can do it the word's way. That's it. The choice is yours. And that's what I like about God. He gives you that choice. Somewhere in there, he said, you choose. You're going to either do it the world's way, or are you going to, and that's what's wrong with our world right now. Because believers are trying to do the word the world's way. Do you know the difference between opinions and convictions? An opinion is something that you hold, but a conviction is something that holds you. <laughs> Pastor, where, where did that come from? Because the word says, do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
when you know better, you do better. So that you may prove what the will of God is, which is good and acceptable and perfect. Brothers and sisters, we are the image of God. That's who your identity is. Know how to work your assignments, but work the good works of him that sent you through purpose. And your purpose is to bring the love of God to everything you touch. That's the purpose, is to bring the love of God to everything you touch. Mm. Bless his name. Brothers and sisters, if you receive it, say amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, God is, man, he's so awesome. He gives us the pieces to the puzzle. He don't withhold nothing. It ain't a set set up. You just got to remember, I like this, you just got to remember that your setbacks ain't nothing but a setup. Brothers and sisters, the word of God is true. And I believe it. You have to know, you now know your purpose. You know your assignment. It behooves you in the world that we're living in to get busy in God. Take the love of God with you. I remember that song, Everywhere You Go. That's the purpose. You know the assignments that he has placed in you. If you're not doing it, you better get ready and get started. Because tomorrow is not promised. But he hasn't taken you out yet. So that means you still got time right now to get started. God bless you, those of you that are viewing us. Uh, (laughs) now you know your purpose now that you know better you can do better but whatever your assignment is if you don't have love in it is it pleasing God oh 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 here it is is it pleasing God or just pleasing you The assignment, the the purpose, is it pleasing God or is it just pleasing you and your circle? To some people, that's all. I'm pleasing pleasing my peeps and God ain't getting nothing out of it. God bless you as I pray. Thank you for being patient to receive all of five parts of this series and and God has spoken so let the church say amen Amen. I ask you as we get ready to sign off that if you would if you receive it type amen in the comment section if there is something that you uh, missed or you was writing and you go back and listen to it and listen to it get it in your spirit Because God is going to hold you accountable. He done planted the peach tree in you. And he wants the benefit of it. But if you're eating all the peaches yourself. And God is getting nothing out of it. Watch this. He going to be like I was. He just going to cut it down. Will a man rob God? Yes. Yes. Every day. Look forward to seeing you on next Sunday. Uh, uh, Lady Freeman, God bless you as I pray to you. Uh, I will be uh, looking at your message on this evening. God bless you. God bless you all. Thank you for being a part of this ministry. Our information is on the screen. We would love to hear from you. You can call us. You can write us. You can text us. You can correspond by Facebook.
just reach out to us because in times like these, we need an anchor. And you need to be sure that your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Who is the solid rock? Jesus is my rock. Look at it, put it all together. He's my rock in a weary land. He's everything that you need. All you need to do is serve in his purpose. Jesus did it. And he died. Watch this. He died, but he yet lived. Just like us. One day, can't y'all just see it? We are in the, we are the split image. He came down, lived, served, did good works, died, raised again. The Bible tells us that those that are dead are going to get up again. Mm. There's nothing new under the sun. God bless you. See you next Sunday. We love you in the name.